Hello, my name is Paul Shelley, and I'm a historian. I also have been a gamer for most of my life, so the Assassin's Creed games have been a staple in my household since the first one released. Despite the whole Illuminati conspiracy stuff, most of the historical context that existed in the games was pretty solid. I've been excited to see the next installment covers the Peloponnesian War, and knowing that many gamers may not know the context of what they're setting out into, I thought I might put together a video for you. Be aware that I'm glossing over about 60 to 70 years of history, so a lot of the details are going to be dropped. View this more as a primer than as a actual historical analysis of the time period. I could probably do an entire video series uh, on the lead up to the conflict shown in the game, but that would take a while. If you're interested in seeing something like that, let me know in the comments below. I'll see what I can do. First, we need to understand the context of the game's setting. We are starting earlier than any other Assassin's Creed game ever. Alexander the Great won't be born for another 75 years, and the first Roman Emperor won't take power until 450 years later. Origins, the previous game in the series, takes place over 380 years after the events of Odyssey. As a result, the world looks very different in terms of the major players. At this time, Greece, as we know it, is not a single entity, but over a thousand smaller countries situated in modern-day Greece, hugging the eastern coast into modern-day Turkey, and extending throughout the many small islands of the eastern Mediterranean. This type of country was known as a polis, though we often call it a city-state since it was usually centered around one city or town. Every one of the polis, that's spelled P-O-L-E-I-S, I have a classical language's wife, so she helped me that one, had unique cultures and traditions, but they still shared some religious beliefs and, perhaps more importantly, the same language. As a result of the various cultural differences, most of the polis fought amongst themselves for power, resources, and land. The only thing that seemed to unite them was their distaste for non-Greeks, those people who go bar, 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 you, you know, barbarians. So when the Persians, a non-Greek-speaking people of the massive empire in modern-day Middle East, tried to invade them, twice, the Greeks got together to push them out. Surprisingly, the unified Greek forces, called the Hellenic League, not only stopped the Persians' advance, but managed to push them out of all of the Greek-speaking lands altogether. It was then that the two largest and most influential of the polis, Sparta, known for its skilled warriors, and Athens, known for being traitors and masters of the sea, were divided on what to do next. Sparta wanted to go home. They had done what they had set out to do, drive out the barbarians. The Athenians, on the other hand, wanted to keep fighting to prevent the Persians from coming back and actively support any uprisings of the peoples who wanted to free themselves from Persian rule. This split the Hellenic League into two different groups. Those that supported the Spartans became known as the Peloponnesian League, named after the region in Greece where most of the states were from, the Peloponnese. The Athenians and their allies formed their own alliance to keep fighting the Persians, calling themselves the Delian League after the holy island of Delos, where they had first formed. Both leagues agreed to a peace terms to keep Persia out of their business, and for neither alliance to get involved directly in the affairs of the other. As the Spartans went home, the Athenians continued to fight the Persians, eventually acting less as allies with their smaller cousins and more as their rulers. They took more and more control of the Delian military, and eventually, the treasury. As the Athenians began to impose their will on the allies, many of them chafed and sought to throw off Athenian rule. They turned to the Spartans for help. The Spartans were also growing angry with the Athenians, who were breaking their peace deals and aiding the enemies of Sparta's allies. However, both sides were fighting proxy wars and inserted themselves into other Poleis' business. The Spartans finally called an assembly of the Peloponnesian League. There, they decided the Athenians and the Delian League had broken the peace treaty, and in 431 BCE, they marched on Athens. This is the start of the Peloponnesian War, a conflict that you will get to help decide in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, fighting as a mercenary for either side during the conflict. What is interesting is that in the many ways this conflict has influenced the past, it is still influencing decisions made today. After the war, Athens blossomed with the pursuit of knowledge. Socrates, an Athenian veteran of the war, would go on to help inspire many other Greeks with his philosophy and help lay the foundations for a great deal of Western thought. Despite him being a massive knobhead who talked in circles and argued with his own defense at his trial, I mean, who the dude is a dick. Seriously, Diogenes is where it's at. Wait. Sorry, my wife wrote that. Classical language, you know.
If it were not for the almost 30 years of conflict leaving a divided and devastated Greece, then Philip II of Macedon could not have conquered it in 346 BCE, opening the door to his son, Alexander the Great, to use the resources and the deep-seated hatred of the Persians to help invade and take over Persia, forming one of the largest empires of the ancient world. Later, in the 1700s, the Founding Fathers of the US would be concerned that their new democracy might become the tyrannical state that Athens, itself a democracy, had become. As a result, it will be interesting to see how the game touches on the ripple effects this conflict would have on history. I, for one, am hoping it's just good. Love the last game, hope this next one's fantastic. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video and would like to see a more in-depth look at this or other historical topics involving games, let me know. I love history, and any way I can connect one of my favorite hobbies to it, the happier I am. Thanks again, and I hope to see you again soon.